Hi subscribers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about abstract classes in Java. Forget about Java, forget about classes, forget everything that you guys have learned so far. What is the meaning of this word, abstract? Let's take a look at an example here. On the left side here, if you guys see, there is an image which is not clear, whether it's a cat or it's a tiger. On the right hand side, if you see there is a tiger and then there's a cat. So often this image on the left is what you call as an abstract image. I'm sure you guys have gone to images.google.com and searched for abstract wallpapers all the time. The same way when you talk about abstract classes, they are classes which are incomplete. So how can you make an incomplete class? Let's take a look at an example here. I have made a class animal and as you notice I have a red word here which says abstract. So I have this variable string noise. No problem with that. Every other normal class also has a variable, right? So what is so different about this? Take a look at this method here. Abstract void print info. Notice something after the method name, after the parentheses, I have a semicolon here. I have not put a method body. There is no opening parentheses, no closing parentheses and no code inside that method. But I've simply returned this word abstract to indicate that this method print info is incomplete. Now class dog extends animal. Now when a class extends this abstract class, it becomes its responsibility to complete what was incomplete. In other words, print info was incomplete in the super class. The subclass has to make some code for that print info method. That's the whole idea behind abstract classes. Now of course, you guys are looking at this and you're like, why the hell would you make it incomplete in the first place and then ask us to complete it? What is the objective behind doing something like that? We will take a look at that in the upcoming video because first we gotta get the word abstract clearly inside your head. So if you go and make an object of dog, no problems with that, you can make an object. You have the dog, you have the breed as Labrador, you have the print info method with it that can be called. But you cannot make an ab object of this class animal. Because it is abstract, it is incomplete and you cannot make incomplete objects. So that goes. So let's take a look at the rules of the abstract classes and then we'll figure out how and why we should use them. So first, like I said, abstract classes are incomplete. Subclasses, that is the inherited members, they should put the missing pieces so that they become complete and you can create objects of the subclasses only. So you can make one or more methods abstract inside a particular class. So even if you make a single method abstract, the class itself must be declared as an abstract class just like you saw previous in the last slide. So an abstract class purpose is to provide an appropriate super class from which all other classes can inherit and share a common design. Now what does this mean? Common design. Now I'll be talking about this one particular point very particularly in the next video with a very simple example that you guys will understand very much and you will understand why we need abstract classes at that time. The class becomes abstract like I said if you have one or more methods are abstract over there you cannot create objects of an abstract class. Now subclasses must provide an implementation of the abstract methods or themselves be declared as abstract. So in other words it is like putting a gun on the subclass head and say you must implement this method otherwise you will be abstract or you will be killed kind of stuff so that's one way of understanding that so they can have variable you can have a variable whose type is an abstract class and of course it can point to an object which is concrete in nature now we will be talking about this in more detail again because this is basically polymorphism which we have discussed in the previous video they can have instance variables, they can have concrete methods, no problem with that. Abstract classes can have everything but they must have at least one method who is incomplete. So you can use abstract superclass names to call static methods which are declared inside abstract superclasses. So if your abstract superclass is called animal, you can have static methods being called like say for example animal.getType kind of stuff. Constructors and static methods cannot be declared abstract. Now you can call static method. Now there's a difference between the above point and the below one. The below point says that if you have a class, you cannot make its constructor as abstract and you cannot make its static methods as abstract. Now there are very several reasons behind that and if you're interested, I can let you know about those reasons in the comments. 
because that's going to be a huge discussion and I don't want to get into that right now. So these are the basic points that you guys are expected to understand about abstract classes but there is still one thing you haven't understood and that is why do we need abstract classes? Why would someone be stupid enough to make something incomplete? So we will talk about this in the next video. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.